Oh, hello, it's me, Jeanette. How are you? Hope you've been well, hope you've been glorious. <laughs> so in today's video, I'm sharing how I made some Halloween themed embellishments and some spooky backgrounds. So I was looking through my stash and I noticed that I didn't have a lot of Halloween things, actually none at all, except for like a few stamps. So I thought I should make my own. So I'm starting off with a piece of vellum and then I have my Versamark Duo uh, Tip Pen. So one side is a brush tip and the other side is a fine nib, fine tip nib. And then all I'm gonna do is draw a spider web with my Versamark pen. And then uh, once I'm done with my spider web, I'm gonna sprinkle some embossing powder in, so white embossing powder on top. And I'm gonna shake off the excess and heat that up, melt the powder with a heat tool. And what's gonna happen is it's going to transform. It's When you do heat embossing, it's kind of like uh, a raised, um, gives your image a raised texture. Uh, kind of like a glossy texture or you there's also like glittery embossing powders that give you a sparkly finish but there's also embossing powders that are more on the matte side so you still get that raised texture but you can get different uh, effects after effects and now you're gonna see that embossing powder react to the heat and it's gonna transform and razzle dazzle us uh, before our very eyes I love watching embossing uh, turn <laughs> It's just so, I don't know, there's something so cool and magical about it. Like you're just not expecting that effect like the first time you see it. So anyway, uh, heat embossing is super fun. And this effect, this little uh, spider web technique is easy breezy. Now the next thing I'm going to do is very similar. So again, I'm taking a piece of vellum and I have a black Sharpie. And I'm just drawing, drawing some eyeballs throughout. <laughs> some spooky eyeballs and... um then I'm going to draw some ghosts with my Bursa Mark pen, some ghost shapes. And then I'm going to take my heat tool and just make sure that my Sharpie is dry before I put my embossing, uh, use my embossing pen on it. I don't want it to smear. And you'll notice that as I'm drawing my ghost shape with the brush side tip this time, as I'm drawing my ghost shape, I'm making sure to try to avoid the eyeballs. I'm not sure if they, they're going to smear or not. So I didn't want to risk it. So I just kind of avoided the eyeballs and drew my ghosts around the eyeballs. And then I'm going to sprinkle some white embossing powder on it, shake off the excess and melt the powder with my heat tool and it's gonna give us some spooky spooky scary ghosts now I'm not too happy about the vellum that I'm working with I don't even remember where I bought this vellum pack I don't even think it had a company on it I got it on Amazon but um, so it's curling a lot and it's just really difficult to work with and I have another vellum that I use. It's from Anita's, Anita's brand. And I will have that linked for you below because that is really good vellum. And I use that at work consistently and it's never, you know, uh, steered me wrong. So it does make a difference um, to use better quality vellum. Don't use this cheap stuff. I'm so sad about it because I still have a few sheets left, but I shall find another use for it. It's not going to go on to waste, but it's just one of those things, you know, you... You kind of don't want to go too cheap on your craft supplies because otherwise it does make your life more difficult. <laughs> and here's what we're left with. You can use this little background for pocket letters, for your journaling, or to make a card. Now this is the Autumnal Treasures stamp set that was included in Creative Stamping issue 60. I want to say I might be wrong. I will double check on that. And so they had these really <laughs> scary spiders, this spider stamp, which it looks super realistic and it was giving me the creeps as I was stamping it. I am such a wimp when it comes to anything Halloween, anything scary. I just get really scared. I can't even watch like Halloween movie or like horror movie trailers because they just terrify me. <laughs> I'm such a wimp. Let me know in the comments if you are a wimp. Do you like horror movies? Do you like scary? I don't mind like cute Halloween things. That's fine. I can handle that. Like those ghosts that I made were, they look pretty friendly, right? Like they could be our friends, but, and even this cat too, he's borderline. He looks a little like he has an evil streak in him, but uh, yeah, I can't do like horror or like really scary uh Halloween things, but anything cutesy and friendly I can do. So let me know if you love 
you know, being scared out of your wits or if you're a big wimp like me. So I'm stamping all of my sentiments and images onto orange and yellow uh, cardstock and it was a challenge to find these pieces in my stash because they're not colors that I normally use in my crafting. So I was really grateful to find some, <laughs> some orange and yellow scraps. And so next what I'm doing is taking all of my um, images that I've stamped and I'm die cutting them with some circles, circle dies that I have in my stash. And then you also see those stripey bags that I've been talking about that I, I made a video. Um, the last video that I made was a mini album video and I don't know why my voice just left me. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Uh, so yeah, I'm die cutting a few bags to get some stripey circles. And those bags, I'm telling you, I'm trying to get rid of them because I have so many of them. And if you want to check out the last video I made, if you haven't seen it, it's how to make a mini album base out of paper bags. Super easy. Totally recommend it. Um, but yeah, I'm just continuing to die cut all of these circle um, shapes out of all the circles circle dies that I have in my stash and I have quite a few from Sizzix and also from um, some different magazine issues. So I think circle dies are just a staple that everyone should have. Maybe you don't have a die cutting machine, but I highly recommend uh, you investing in circle um, punches. I used to have, oh, I have some in storage back home back in the States. Uh, I have a a few different sizes of circle punches and they were the best and I wish I could have brought them with me but I only had limited luggage space so couldn't bring those but yeah if you do not have a die cutting machine with circle dies um, I highly recommend either circle punches they're just so great for making quick and easy embellishments and now it's time to start layering all these circle die cuts that I have and I'm adding some twine for texture. I've stapled these centers with my Tim Holtz tiny attacher, which is amazing. I love how tiny those staples are and it's just not very bulky like big staples. And so yeah, highly recommend the Tim Holtz tiny attacher. And then to add some dimension to my um, circle die cuts as I'm layering them, I'm using not just liquid adhesive, but I'm using a uh, foam tape to just give them, to make them pop just a little bit more. And next I'm taking a white gel pen. This is the Sakura Jelly Roll pen, which I will have linked below. It is my favorite white gel pen brand. I don't know, I just think it's really great. And I just added some faux stitching along the edge of my circle die. And then if you just layer that on top of that vellum spider web background paper, you can have a really, just a really nice Halloween card or just some some fun um, elements to add to your journal if you do any junk journaling or creative journaling. And now it's time to make another embellishment in here. I'm keeping this one simple. So I'm using the spider pattern vellum background and this magical day sentiment and just doing a little bit of fishtailing here on both sides of the sentiment. And I'm just going to layer that on top with a cat, <laughs> with one of my cat die cuts. And that one is all done, so that was easy breezy. If you've never made your own embellishments, you know, DIY embellishments, a great place to start is by just having a bunch of circle die cuts, you know, just like I have here, various sizes, kind of like concentric circles, and you just start layering those up and they come together really easily. So next up, I'm making like a spooky embroidery hoop. So I have this outline. And the circle outline and I'm just adding some glue to it and then I'm going to glue that onto my spidery uh, vellum background and then I'm going to trim off the excess and then I have just kind of like a little mini embroidery spooky embroidery hoop to embellish and for this embellishment I'm going to keep it simple all I'm going to do is add a magical day sentiment on there which you saw me stamp out earlier and then I just trimmed it up and just kept it simple now I'm starting on my next embellishment and what I love about this little outline circle die is that you can create, if you wanted to, you could create some super easy shaker embellishments, but I don't think I have any acetate. I have to check my stash. It's, it's like such a mess right now. My little, <laughs> my little craft corner is such a mess. Sometimes like, I just have to clean it and reorganize it to find out what I have. Does that, do you guys do that? 
Like, yeah, because otherwise I, you forget. I don't know. I forget what I have in my stash sometimes. But it'd be great if I could find some acetate because I could totally whip up some <laughs> fun little Halloween shakers. I found this white thread in my sewing kit, so I just took some and bunched it up and attached it with my tiny attacher. I thought it looked like spider webs, and now I'm fussy cutting my kitty out. I felt like if I left the white background on it, it looked a little bit too bulky for some reason. I don't know if that's the right word. It was just overwhelming the embellishment kind of, so I fussy cut him out. I don't know if that makes sense. It makes sense in my head. <laughs> Sorry guys. And so yeah, just added him there. And then I'm just gluing everything down with my Cosmic Shimmer Dries Clear Glue, which I love. And then I'm done with another embellishment. Now in retrospect, I'm looking at that blue background, that first base layer, and I wish I would have done something else to it. I wish I had um, some kind of like embossing folder with just a, it'd be cool if it was like a spider web texture like an embossing folder with spiderweb texture, but I don't have one. But um, I can always make more and maybe find another embossing folder that works. So for my next embellishment, I'm wrapping some black, black and white twine to this, and then I'm gonna add um, another circle layer, another circle die cut on top. And I don't know about you, but as I'm watching the video again, I feel really inspired and I have more, even more ideas. That I would like to try out. I hope that, you know, like if you watch my videos, I totally don't mind if you copy my embellishments, like word for word, not word for word, layer per layer, layer for layer. <laughs> I totally don't mind if, if you copy, but I hope that what my videos do is like inspire you with your own ideas. Does that make sense? So I hope you're feeling as inspired right now to create some more um, Halloween <laughs> embellishments. So many ideas, so little time. I've been finding, it's it's been a struggle lately to find time to craft for fun, to craft for, for my YouTube channel as well. Um, I don't know about you, do you guys have a lot of time for crafting? Do you craft like in the late hours? Do you craft in the morning? Do you only craft on the weekends? Like what's your crafting schedule like? I would love to know uh, after work. Uh, and after I'm done like making dinner and like doing everyday daily chores, I'm completely wiped and that's usually the only time that I have to craft. Um, but it's just been so hard lately. I don't know if it's been extra tired. I don't know if it's the shorter days, it's shorter daylight hours. I don't know. <laughs> Let me know what your crafting schedule is like. When do you find time to craft? Like what are your days that, you know, or do you, do you have like a day that you set aside for crafting? I would love to know. And I'm all done with my embellishments, so I can use these in my snail mail, in pocket letters, I can use them in my journals, and I'm actually gonna add one to my paper bag um, mini album that I mentioned was, that's from my last video, so you see me add that here at the end. So I just added it to the front, and I thought it paired really well <laughs> with a little mini album, um, paper bag mini album. But yeah, you can use them for so many things. If you'd like to see more of my crafty projects, then please subscribe to my channel or you can find me on Instagram at Jeanette Lane Vlog. Thank you so, so much for watching my video and I'll see you real soon.